So now we get to see what happens when TDD goes wrong and how we fix it and the difference between developer testing and tester testing. Let's go. Okay, <laughs> so welcome back. So let's see, you can see here, got a test, it's all green. Um, I've pretty much written the code in the game generator for all the conditions and everything for this. All is good, yes. The answer is no, no, all is not good. All is very bad. Because while I have written the code for the game and I have written the test for this, the problem is the test is so big and complicated that it's really hard for me to review it now and see what conditions that I've I've messed up, right? I didn't I've used the test to drive the code, but I haven't really done test driven development because my tests don't uh, explain the design, right? I, I, in order for me to explain design, I, I have to put comments in here, um, I have to say what I'm doing, and partly this is because, right, what's led me to this is the notion that I'm not testing individual chunks of code. I'm testing at this point an application, but the application is running in the background. So I essentially have to instantiate the application in the user each time because there's state being maintained. Every time the user does something, there's state. Every time the user picks something up, he carries it. There's parts in here where the user can only carry the thing once and then they can't pick it up again. They're penalized when they do that. What I should have done is test each one of these conditions in separate parts, uh, create a new user, set that user up, uh, and then check the conditions that I wanted to do. I haven't done that. What I've done is a single user all the way through. So now what I have to do is disentangle this, but now I've got a problem. Right, the problem is I don't have tests that test my test. So I can't refactor my test easily because I have no safeguard. I've got a test which tests the game. So in order to refactor my test, what I essentially have to do is keep this thing the same because I know this works, I know this tests the game. Then start writing other tests which cover the work that this does and only when all of those work can I be satisfied that uh, this game is going to work. So what I really want is can take a treasure and get with a hammer. That's fine. That's going to be a, a simple walkthrough. But I have got conditions like uh, you can't take the uh, treasure. You can't pick up a prize twice. So I should have a test for that. Like cannot pick up uh, vase twice. That should be a test. And then I can get rid of some of the combinations in here that are testing this score. There we go. So I try and take the prize again, and I'm, where is it? So here it is. I can only pick one up, try and take the prize again, then I'm penalized. And you see that even looking through the code here, I find it hard to find this condition. So I have a problem that I have to solve. It looks like I've done TDD. I haven't done TDD. Now I have to unwind that. So let's see how we get on in a couple of minutes. Okay, crisis averted. Um, I've run all the tests now. You can see here that the test that you saw in the previous section is now very small. Now, can take treasure and get with hammer, basically comes in, uh, takes the vase, goes into the hammer room, uses the hammer, and then we've got the, the treasure and it checks the score. So what I've done now is I've gone through what I expected to do at the start, then I've marked down which ones I've covered, and you can see I haven't covered this one yet, so I need to do that. Also, you can see that I have other tests in here that as I was writing the game, I realized I didn't cover that in the design, so now I've got that covered. So now it's possible for me to uh, finish this off and then come back and review it from the point of view of have I tested enough? Because at the moment I haven't even tested what I said I was going to do in the design. I've covered more stuff, which is good, but I'm going to have to come back and review that from a test perspective. So let me just write this test. 
then I'm going to come back and review this from a test perspective rather than a development test driven design unit test perspective. Okay, so I've done that. So as a developer, right, who is just coding to a story, my job is done, right? I've gone through the story, I've covered all these conditions, I'm good to go, all my test work. Now the issue I have here, when we write unit tests, it's very easy to do code coverage analysis. The problem that I have is that when I do code coverage, because this code is in the game and the game is essentially configured by this code. So this code is covered and run when I start the game, right? My tests are not checking whether each of these conditions has been hit or exercised or used when the game is created. So I have a problem that I don't know whether all of these bits of code that I've written are actually covered unless I I have to review that. So I'm going to write coverage of conditions. So I have to go through, check this code against what I've actually written in. Then I have to uh, review it from a test perspective. So just actual, have we tested all the different combinations of those conditions? So I'll probably fast forward this as I uh, do the review, but that's where I'm about to start now. So let me just put this here. This is a slightly smaller screen than I normally have, but because we're reviewing this for the video, I will have to put up with the pain. Be back in a minute. Okay, so I've reviewed it. I've moved the tests around. What One of the good things is having tests run in random order shows me that there are problems in my test code. And I have to make sure that the right user Okay, so in theory, all the conditions that I've got here are covered. So now what I want to think about are all, all the scenarios that might happen from the user covered. So let's, I'm going to have a quick, so this is the actual test coverage. So I'm going to have a quick look at the actual test coverage now. So what have we got? We've got the basic flow where uh, you <clears throat> pick it up, smash it, good. So we've got, try to get vas twice. What about uh, try to get a vas after smashing? It's got using the hammer twice. Try and take treasure after smash, take smash. I think I'm, I'm trying to take treasure, but not try and take another vase. What I'm surprised that is, given that I have a condition that checks for that, I should have already covered it. So let me just. Okay, so this is it here. So here I'm trying to take the vase twice, but I haven't um, taken the vase, then 
smashed it to get rid of it and clear everything and then try and take one, which is what I want here. So I cannot take a vase after smashing it. And what I have to do is I have to create a new user each time. And since this is a test game, it doesn't really matter. But this is one of the hassles. And you can see that that's part of the reasons why I haven't tested like this before. So what I should do is expand my DSL to make this easier, but I'll just go through the hassle here. So I take the treasure, go up, smash it, come back, try and take the vase again, and it should not let me. I'm going to put that check in here as well. And let's check that the score goes down. So we come in the right place, we take it, check our score, uh, then go up, hammer, in fact, let's check our score there. Then go south, then try and take it again. We've already picked it up. course. Need to start on the right result. Okay, so again, you see one of the difficulties of testing after the fact. I don't know if this is working, because it wasn't failing as I created it. I have to review it quite extensively to make sure it works, because that's what we do when we test. We're creating the condition. I have to make sure I've set this up properly. I have to make sure I'm using the right user all the way through. I have to make sure I'm asserting on enough things to check whether the condition actually works. So I'm trying to think of problems. So I know that I can drop the vase. So the issue is, can I smash it then? So I know I can't take one after smashing it. Uh, I know I can't drop one if I'm not carrying it. What if I smash it and then try and drop it? That doesn't really make any sense. So these are the kind of things I could test. So I could at this point jump to uh, exploratory interaction and test that. But I could do that in here. I could write a throwaway test that says... So the one that I just did where I cannot uh, try and take it afterwards after smashing. Can't tell smashing already and dropping. Now I don't think I'm gonna need this test going forward. Alright, so this is just that's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna So I'm gonna just explore here in the code. Right, I don't actually need to start up the application and test it through the GUI. I I will do that, but for this set of conditions where I'm testing the game and I'm testing the actual game setup, I don't need to do that. I can satisfy myself that it works fairly well down here. It might actually be easier to do that. In fact, it wouldn't be easier to do that interactively simply because we've got a state here where you have to have a specific user in a specific state. And I would have to uh, set up a new user or log in as a new user, navigate through the game map to get to this place. And there's a whole bunch of setup required to allow me to test this, which makes it hard to test through the GUI, but a lot easier to test in here. So I'm going to call him smart cherry ticket twice two. But what I'm going to do, and what I should be doing throughout. All right, so now it's a lot easier for me to um, change the, the username. I should have really done that before, but I didn't. All right, so I want to take it smash it and then I'm going to fail to drop it because I don't have it so then I can't take it again now if I drop it before I use it I shouldn't be able to use it so I might try that in a second but let's run that now because I'm running this test because I've ignored it it's not going to run the build I can run it from here so what have I done wrong that was interesting I didn't know that so what happened there was because I had I ignored it it ran this, but it didn't run the 
um, before class. I did not know that. I did not know that. So that's interesting. We've got this running now and it has said everything is good. So what's happened? So I've failed to drop it. So I've asked it, you drop it. No, you're not carrying a vase, you can't drop it. So then I can't take it up again. Because what I was hoping doesn't happen is that because the drop clears conditions that putting the drop out of uh, state didn't allow it to clear it such that I could then take it again, which is good. So let me just check that when I drop it up here, I can't use it. So I'm expecting this test to fail because this successfully shouldn't work and it should fail on this line. Okay, so it failed because I should be able to drop that. Okay, so I've dropped it, then I can't use the hammer because I've got nothing to hammer. That'll make sense. Alright, so that was just a quick exploration around that. Now, what I'm going to do is because I'm very in the developer mode at the moment, I'm not going to continue to test at this level. What I'm going to do is assume that that works. Now what I've got, because this test kind of cheats, it jumps to the certain locations, works through, does things. What I really want to do is have this as part of a walkthrough. Now, I do have a walkthrough test that I'm working on but haven't finished yet. So where's my walkthrough test? So this is the walkthrough test is, these are essentially unit tests, but they're unit tests of the game configuration, not the game engine. Then what I do is I have a kind of functional test of, with the game running, can I play the game, right? But I don't play the game through the REST API. Let's have a look here. I don't play the game through the REST API or through the GUI, I play the game here, right? So I actually do a run through of the entire game here so that when I'm de-risking, can I play the game? Can I play the game through the REST client? So let me extend this. How far did I get with this walkthrough test? So not very far yet. So what I'll do is I'll just add this in. So currently this walkthrough is in room six, which is over here. So I want to go across here into the puzzle room. So this is the, uh, the treasure vase puzzle. So I need to go east into room five. All right, so I'm going to get it to the point where this works and then we'll revisit this when I'm done.